you know, this movie is really good, but this movie definitely has problems that even one can't avoid. Star Trek Nemesis is the 10th Star Trek film in the series and it is the fourth and final film to have the Star Trek Next Generation cast and this is directed by Stuart Baird. He's not even a director, he's an editor. But let's go on into the plot. The plot is that in this movie, um, John Luke Picard and his crew take are going on the galaxy uh, no, take to the galaxy again on a diplomatic mission to initiate peace with the Romulans. But upon arrival on the alien planet, the crew is faced with a threat that could lead to the Earth's destruction. And Picard meets his most dangerous adversary yet, and a surprising personal nemesis, which is a clone of himself, basically. Yeah, like I said in the intro, this movie is underrated as heck, but this movie definitely has a lot of problems, and people criticize this film for being the least successful in the series. This film was a box office disappointment, I don't know why, because Chris gave this movie, and not only that this movie failed, but the cancel Star Trek Enterprise was also cancelled. And um, three, and then eventually three years later, 2000, Viacom split from CBS, and then we all knew what happened in 2009. But I'm gonna save that for next month <laughs> because I'll be able to. I'm gonna do the reboot series, all three reboot films in the reboot series. Now. The cast is great. Patrick Stewart, Jonathan Frakes, all the cast is the same cast members again. Now, Judd Law was originally going to be in this film, but the director, he wanted an unknown actor. And Tom Hardy was great as Shinzon, the leader. That was great. You also got Ron Perlman. You also have Whoopi Goldberg uncredited. And Brian Singer as Kelly. It took me two rewatches to figure out who it was, but it was actually Brian Singer, the director of X Men One and X Two. And the action is great in this film. The special effects are fantastic. This was the last film that Jerry Goldsmith did compose as he died after the, this film was made in 2004. <laughs> the makeup is really nice too. I, lo I love the makeup on the on Tom Hardy and they made Tom Hardy look more similar to Patrick Stewart. So that was a nice touch. And the and the action scenes are just great. There's a whole lot of action in the film. I love it. Now, Nemesis was supposed to have been the first Star Trek film to feature Will Wheaton's character, Wesley. But his scenes were almost entirely cut out of the film, all leaving him only for a cameo during the wedding. And that's another issue. This movie, th there was 50 minutes worth of scenes film, and that was cut. I don't... And this movie is a hundred, an hour and 56 minutes long, so I, I don't know why you cut that much footage out. You could have at least kept some of the footage in. <laughs> and and um, the direction, Stuart Baird, the editor in this film, he's only directed U.S. Marshals Executive Decisions. And Jonathan Frank Frakes, he wanted it, that um, he was doing work on Clock Stoppers, Stoppers as Star Trek Nemesis began filming. <laughs> but yeah, 
the Cavs, they don't, they didn't, they criticize some. Most of the Cavs, they've criticized him. And if Jonathan Frakes, he said himself, if he would have directed this movie, would have made a lot more money. But yeah, this film, it real, it. I like the film, but it's definitely not as awesome as it should have been. That's which is why I'm gonna have to go and give this a a. I'm not. I'm gonna spare the skip this movie writing, and I'm just gonna give this movie a Redbox rental because that's the only way I can get. That's the only way you you. A red box rental. So let me know in the comments below what you think of Star Trek Generations. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? And I'll see you guys next time.